This is another RCA roundy. I think it's a CTC 15. Cosmetically, it's in pretty good shape. I give it about a probably about a seven overall. Go around the back here. I don't know if this is going to show up in the low light I'm working in out here. Well, no, it's not. So I'll just go right to the uh, demonstrate the picture. I've got it hooked up to a DVD player right now. And I've already got that running, so we'll just get the picture here and see how it looks. Sounds like Forbidden Planet. Like we're being met. Wilson. Hi, I sir. Hold the tractor. Hi, I sir. I can need a little horizontal adjustment. The driver must be a mad. I need just a horizontal real quick here. What driver? There you go. Get a nice picture. Kind of a boring part of this scene. It's like I'll just fast forward so it's a little more interesting. I like it when you get to the uh, to the main complex. Maybe a lot better colors, and of course we get to see the lovely Anne Francis. I kind of dig this guy's pad. Dr. Morbius has a cool look at that. And that's pretty sweet. Back up a little bit so you get a better picture. I always look try to look for good greens, which things doing very well. I'm not sure where the horizontal is off. I'm gonna try clicking the channel and come back, see if it locks back in. That's alright. Let me go back a little bit more. Yeah, seems all right. Commander Adam, this is Lieutenant Prime, my executive. Lieutenant Astor, I should talk. Let's go ahead and fast forward to my favorite part, which is when Anne Francis makes oh, her right, appearance. Right. This is a great movie. If you guys, I mean, I'm sure anybody over the age of, I don't know, 50 seen this, but this is the the Forbidden Planet, one of the best sci-fi movies of all time, especially considering the fact that it was came out in the uh, mid-50s. Oops, push play. And in the mid-50s, sci-fi was really kind of stupid, low-budget garbage. Aim right between the eyes. This, uh, this was really a pretty intelligent movie. Fire. I'm not going to give away any of the uh, story. If you don't know it, you really should watch it. Really pretty interesting. It's got some great actors. Leslie Nielsen not not doing stupid police videos. It's unfortunate he went into went off that crazy comedy. I thought he was a pretty good actor. Walter Pigeon, Robbie the Robot. There's a nice picture of the fruit bowl you can see. Nice reds and greens and yellows in there. Doctor, how did you come by such a mechanism? Guy in the middle, I can't remember his name off the top of my head. Some of you might recognize him from a couple Star Trek episodes. And the guy on the very far coming up right there, that's Jack Kelly. He was he kicked around for a long time. I always thought he was a pretty good actor. Another under, underrated actor. He didn't seem too much. He never made it big, I don't think. Maybe he did. I don't know. But good actor, good, good uh, solid character actor. Let's go ahead and get to uh, Anne now. i probably not a very good film credit, just my own personal opinion. Okay, here she comes. Where is Anne Francis? Only in our special love. Uh, come on, Anne, make your appearance. And here she comes. There we are. The lovely Anne Francis. Alta, I specifically asked you not to join us for lunch. Lunch is over. 
I'm sure you never said a word about not coming in for coffee. She was another well, great that me. never seemed to achieve, uh, achieve superstardom. Is, uh, Commander Adams, but, Dr. you know, and, uh, I don't know, I, I just, I don't know why, because she was always, I always thought, a very good actress. I used, to, I used to watch anything that she was in, I would, I would get it, watch it. <laughs> Can this end one get you some coffee? <laughs> that's pretty funny. Alright, well that's enough of that. I hope you appreciate the, the display. So what we're going to do now is I'm just going to, I don't have my helper with me today, so I'm going to Thank turn you. this off and of course you, uh, move the back. I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. jump around and show you that. Like I guess I'm not sure if this is a 12 or a 15. I'll know when we pull it back off and uh, see if it's got the uh, focus tube or the solid state rectifier for the focus circuit. The 15 was the only uh, RCA that ever used that selenium solid state rectifier for the focus, whereas Zenith, you know, used it a lot. Um, I just don't care for them. I prefer the uh, the 1V3s or 2V2s or whatever they were. Anyway, I'm going to stop now. We'll pick up the back. Okay. Clearly, it's a CTC 15. You can see that white stick right in there. That's the rectifier. At least I sometimes replace I see fairly shiny solder. There's the uh, flyback. It's off, and it's pretty hot, so these fly bats always seem to run so darn hot but they do and yes I have adjusted the linearity coil which is for the efficiency coil which is right back there the red right in the center of the frame right there Get the current as low as possible all these fly backs seem to run hot I don't know I guess it's going to be just the way it is anyway uh, Got the speakers over there. It's got twin speakers on the side. And you can see there's no speaker mounted in nor nor the normal spot, which is right there. I don't even see like any millings for it. I see the little mount lugs, but it was never opened up, so clearly it would be, you know, there's no speaker going in there. Uh, I don't see much else going on here. It's like a, had a few caps replaced. There's a fresh cap right there. And there's a cap there. There's a coupling cap to the video amp cap there. Uh, these yellow caps right there. There. And if you one more behind us, you can see it right that one. Those are the caps that always go bad. They're 0.01s. They're coupling caps to the uh, grids of the difference amps. And they, I don't know why, they just, they just don't hold up. Uh, I say I have the original caps on the convergence board. I still have the original uh, selenium rectifier on the convergence board. Uh, it's not too clear, it's not hard to see back in there, but it looks like I've replaced a few caps on the sweet board, which is always typical. So it has the original electrolytic on the, uh, that paper wrapped cap right by the uh, coil up there. That's a, uh, that's a cathode bypass on the vertical out, original there. But I do see quite a few yellow caps thrown in there, which is, and some new red drops and orange drops. That's me, no doubt. Uh, I don't remember if I replaced the caps on these uh, filters. Uh, let's see here, it feels a little bit warm. That cap's a little bit warm. The cap I was referring to was that one right there, that brown I pulled. That's a doubler. Not too bad, not too bad. 
not too bad. I'm not an advocate of always replacing caps uh, on the power supply unless I feel that there's a problem with them. I know a lot of people disagree with that, but it's been my experience that most of the time these sets will work fine just the way they are. This, uh, I'm a little worried about this fly though. That thing is really pretty warm. I mean, it's still very, ow, ow. I mean, that's got to be at least 100 and at least 160 degrees maybe a little more and that wasn't on very long i had it on before when i before i started the video that little short bit wasn't it it was probably off for half an hour i don't know i've got extra flies but i sure would like to know exactly what's going on what's peculiar is this discoloration right there you see that that brown uh i got that there and i'll see if you can get it on this side if I can in there on the, a friend of mine tells me this stuff gets conductive and can actually cause the fly to kind of short out I'm going to take a quick meter reading just to see if I can read any resistance I should probably use a, a analog meter though because digital meters are not very good so I'm going to get my analog meter and we're going to just see if I can measure any kind of uh Resistance, any, uh, any, um, any conduction across that plastic. See if anything weird is going on. It has, has become conductive in some cases. We don't know why that happens, but it does. There's not much wax drippage out here, either that or it's gotten so hot it literally comes out as a liquid. I'm looking there, that's pretty shiny stuff. I don't see the big gobs of wax pouring out like you see sometimes. Hmm. Put it, oh, it looks like I put a new uh, pot on this thing at one time. I kind of remember this horizontal pot gave me some troubles. I think it was actually causing the flyback current to be a little excessive. That pot was open. And uh, I had to put a new pot in. It's like a 10 ohm pot. It uses the uh, focus coil. That's kind of an interesting way to focus if you're not familiar with it, the way it does it. It's basically a transformer. And there's a... Uh, there's two coils, and they're in opposite directions, and as you move the slug up and down, the, the, the primary of that coil, which is a, uh, you know, an AC signal, is coupled in phase and out of phase in relationship to uh, the, the um, focus voltage. So when it's in phase, it adds to the focus voltage, and when it's out of phase, it decreases the focus voltage. That's how they work. I was often wondering how you can adjust a coil to increase the the DC focus voltage but it's really adding and subtracting to the AC voltage, uh, voltage which is then rectified by that stick right there. Anyway I'm going to go get that uh, multimeter out here and take a quick measurement and see what we get.